I gotta three. remember shit I did 30 something days ago. It's okay. We got a list. <laughs> and then we have Kieran's picks. Every last one of them funny. Got no problem with comedy horror. Uh, first is Day Shift. Yeah, otherwise known with, as Snoop Dogg Vampire Hunter. You, okay, you guys I love this movie. I wish there was more. Oh, yeah, you, me too. You He's guys love this movie. movie. I, I was like, I was... As it's I have gone. said many times, it's like if they made a Snoop Dogg Vampire Hunter TV series because of that movie, I would watch it religiously. Okay, we, we all talk about Snoop Dogg, and we all love him for obvious reasons. He's terrific. But he's not our main character in this movie. It's uh, Jamie Foxx, right? Jamie, yeah, Jamie Foxx. Fox. Yeah. And he's okay, but, you know, he's not Snoop Dogg wielding a Gatling gun. I thought he was pretty amusing. I liked him okay. Uh, Snoop Dogg was very much the comic relief. Which was? And he was the coolest person in the entire damn movie. For his 20 minutes of screen time. Yeah. Uh, and even, I may be generous with that. It could be 15. <laughs> but I still had fun with this movie. Some that was on the stupid side, but I still had fun. <laughs> Oh, I like, it was on the stupid side. I, I really like the uh, wire setup from the beginning. Yes. The, the wire, every time. The, yeah, exactly. Works every single time. It's set up from the original action sequence and then right at the very end. Bam. Yeah, yeah, my, it's the very fun. example of a brick joke. The problem with that is they, they set up earlier that the, what are they called? Uber vampires or master vampires? Could survive, decap- could survive decapitation and she does If they can get the head back on. So I, I think Franco I was, uh, did though immediately, didn't he? I mean, okay, yeah, yeah. it's it's a Chekhov's gun. I, it works, but it almost feels like too easy of a solution giving the opponent he was up against. I mean that's that's a valid point. Hmm. But I still found it loads of fun. Uh, my, my favorite gag of the movie outside of pretty much every time Snoop was on screen was uh, Jamie Foxx's character beating denial that he liked Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, I will admit that was pretty good. I've told you before you should watch it. It's one of the funniest movies ever made. No, no, he was, this month. He was super into it, though. Wait, wait, she ended up with Jake, um, with Edward? Oh, fuck that. <laughs> like, that's, that's a good recurring joke. I like that. <laughs> Anything that, like, debases or indignifies, like, a certain actor who's, like, a, over, above a certain quality or standard, and they're just having to, like, wade through that awkwardness is just, yes, it's 10 out of 10. I didn't find Franco all that funny, though. No, he, he's supposed to be, like, stick in the mud. He's just supposed to be, like, the guy who's just, uh, to, you know, step on the toes of Jamie Foxx, and that's it. Yeah. He's, he's the straight man. He's, he's supposed to be the straight man. He's the dweeb. Essentially. He's the new guy. He's the guy who gets drunk at the party, and you draw doodles on him. Mm. Do, do, do we want to mention the final line of the movie? Oh, right. <laughs> It's the thing about Santa. It wasn't Santa Clara. All the damn vampires in the world. <laughs> they completely rip off uh, Lost Boys. <laughs> but I don't care. <laughs> Which is a great movie. That's another one that would totally be a ringer if we watched it. If you could get Judas Priest out of your head when you watch it, though. Mm. Uh, Next Karen pick was Overlord. I think this should be counted as a ringer because this is an established good movie. Uh, Wait, really? I never heard of it before. I saw it in the cinema. Yeah, you saw it in the cinema. He told me about it. He said it was really good. Yes, that how that's how movies work. They are (laughs) not always like 
seriously my least favorite of all of his. It it's not really? a very paced movie. I'm gonna Carol. Pacing wise, this is not that great. I mean, th- this is something like first half hour you could trim a little bit there before it gets to the meat and potatoes, but it, it's I, a straight I up- don't know if okay. I would say it's the worst movie on my list, but it's certainly lower down. God, didn't we talk about this on like the night we were watching it too? Like, it begins as a war movie, becomes a horror movie, and then by the end of it, it's a superhero movie. Mm. Like, it's a strange yeah, genre it's, shift. Yeah, it it doesn't very confused tone shift. It begins. Okay, I, I feel like the entire first almost half hour can be cut from this movie. We don't need the D-Day type opening. Where their planes are being shot down. Because that has nothing to do with the larger scope of the film. <laughs> they, they, like, that could easily just be covered in a, a line of dialogue. We lost the rest of the squad on our way here or something. I mean, there's, there's certain parts where they could uh, trim the fat. Because let's be real, the real plot of the movie doesn't begin until they get to the village. Yeah, the the real plot begins like 47 minutes into the actual movie. To that point, there's like just over an hour left to tell the whole story that you know, <laughs> that we remember it for. And it's an interesting premise. I, 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 I think anyway. It's just, mm-hmm. it takes forever for us to get there. It's one of those things, it's not a terrible movie, but it's, you can see how it probably could have done I'm Come actually interested. Hey, I'm actually interested. Like, what was your thought process when you came to picking this one? Because, like, up until uh, you've established by now that like, you pick comedy horrors this whole month, but this is one where it's like this has not got comedy in it to me. Uh, I don't know. I saw the movie. I uh, like fucking read the premise. I was like, eh, okay, sounds interesting enough. Was it similar to Dead Snow originally last year? Is that what caught your eye? Yeah, probably. Okay. Uh, most interesting thing Dead about Dead Snow, I think, was a surprising one for all of us last year. Yeah. The uh, that's, most that's in- what I've seen. The, the most interesting scene in, in um Overlord, for me anyway, was the uh, sequence at the end where I don't know. It kind of felt like it was ripped right out of an Uncharted video game where our main character is running out of the Nazi complex, and it's all done in one take, and it looks really nice, even though most of it was clearly done in front of a green screen. It's a good take. But this holds the uh, throne for you, doesn't it? Like, this is the only J.J. Abrams movie you like. Let's go with Don't Hate. Okay. Uh, next one of Kieran's was Eat Locals. This one I really liked. I was I really liked it. I I had a lot of fun with it. Uh. <laughs> Wasn't my favorite, but it was it was okay. Charlie Cox is in it. He's always funny. I was baffled by the hair shampoo or the skin care thing. Turns out the cure for, you know, immortal skin is vampire. (laughs) Oh, uh, and ironically enough, we're back to baby eating with this movie. Hooray! I mean, that's that's what lands the guy in trouble at the beginning, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, is the entire movie essentially evil versus evil? Kind of. Uh, people who think they're good, but they're really just evil. Because like, I had a hard time remembering what our villains' motivations were. They wanted to capture the vampires alive so they could study for science? Uh, okay, there's two different groups dealing with the vampires. Um, on the non-vampire side. 
One is basically the military, this certain unit, their job is to eliminate the vampires. However, there are certain ones in the unit who have decided, no, we're going to sell the vampires to this cosmetics company. We're going to catch them and sell them to this cosmetics company so they can make shit tons of money off them. So, yeah. I, I was amused by Eat Locals. Not a crazy ending. I don't, th- I don't think anybody saw that final like uh, advertising pitch for the advert. Like I didn't think anybody saw that coming. That was great. Yeah, that was different. <laughs> like what a way to end it. it. It feels like Dog Soldiers, you know, where like that the newspaper gets thrown in front of the face at the end of Dog Soldiers, where it's like Germany seven, England nil. <laughs> After yeah. everything that had happened. <laughs> like, I mean. I will say for for a movie that had shockingly little action. I never got bored watching this movie. I, I was that engaged. I mean, I, I look at this movie as like, oh, so this is what Daredevil did and the cast of Doctor Who from that season did <laughs> when they weren't filming. Yeah, uh, there were a surprising number of people. Well, I guess it's a UK movie. I mean... I'm pretty sure just about everybody in acting has been on Doctor Who at some point. What was this a... In some role. Was this put in the cinema or a made-for-TV movie? Probably UK cinemas for like three weeks, and then they were like, oh, God, the new Marvel movie's out. Get that out there quick. <laughs> As is the case normally. I have no idea. Because... Oh, the I... way it works over here is like, hey, there's a UK... Uh, horror movie that's like great reviews and everything it's not going to do financially well it's just going to create attention in foreign markets but it's going to debut here and it'll appear for like maybe a month and then it'll be gone right and then the same marvel movie that you've known the entire year will be in circulation for like three and a half months until it is massively successful and we'll keep it in five. Oh, buddy 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 we live in the age of disney plus marvel movies are in theater for like a month and a half before they're on disney plus yeah. Like I the... just looked it up. It's not saying anything about it being made for TV. Okay. Might have been a DVD release, you don't know. Hmm. Sh- should we move on to Kieran's Crown Jewel? Oh, yes. Blood sucking bastards. <laughs> and the Great one movie. that we knew that Joe would go squee over because as Pedro Pascal. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I did. I and like he did not disappoint. I like this movie. You, you are a fan girl. A little bit. A little bit. You say that, but he, he is yet to disappoint us. I mean, I was just meaning in general. <laughs> this, this movie awakened a new fetish in me, which is the nonchalant villain. <laughs> I, I love villains that are just like... Yeah. They have no investment personally in this. They just want to do whatever they, you know, the job they're doing. And Pascal's character in this is just killer. It's excellent. He, he's yeah. so little investment in the personal enmity between him and his rival. In. <laughs> he's just there yeah, for the job. It's the go ahead, see if I care kind of thing. It, it much like in, uh, I can't remember which of the Austin Powers movies it is. It's like. What was the line from Doctor Evil? It's like, go ahead, kill the shit, little shit. <laughs> <laughs> See what I get. That's the first yeah, one. Yeah, no, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. It, it's the it's the same energy. It's you know, fantastic. Give the, give a shit, kill the little bastard. <laughs> you know what the worst yeah, the part is. Liquidated, you little shit. <laughs> the worst part is, even though like he's clearly the villain of the movie, Pedro Pascal's character actually was a really good manager. Yeah, he improved their business quite well. And of course the manager knew. <laughs> I mean, for fuck's sake, he knows when you steal a paper clip. <laughs> it was amusing. It, oh, it was oh, oh. really funny. Pedro Pascal is always great. 
Who was the security guard? He was really good, too. Oh, he's a standout in this, that guy. The, the unsung hero of the movie. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> like, I, I, for the first two times he appeared, I was like, okay, this character's kind of obnoxious and irritating. But then he stuck to the character and kept reappearing. <laughs> Like, it's a weird movie, because, like, the least interesting character was our lead. Well, he, he's not supposed to be spectacularly amazing. He's not interesting. He's not dynamic. He's not got an amazing voice or anything. He's just he, a guy. He's Jim from The Office. Like, I, okay, I had to remember as well, like, if this was... Carol, do you remember Cabin in the Woods? Oh, yes. Okay, is he the stoner from Cabin in the Woods, the lead character from... Yes. The- Okay, that's where I saw his face from. Right I was like, I was trying to say on the night, like, is that the guy? Yep, same actor. I had to look it up because I was like, wait a minute. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, same guy. Like, like same disinterested kind of bureaucratic nightmare energy. Like, eh, do I have to turn up on Monday? <laughs> like him and his friends all get picked off one by one until only he's left and the whole thing is about seizing life at the end of the day instead of giving in and you know becoming a vampire <laughs> like this dick bag it's great I don't, I don't know this is being a vampire it's some benefits <laughs> prove that one guy's work performance and he got the bang the hawk secretary and you know had an orgy so the secret of Success in business is getting sent on a business trip to Romania, I guess. Apparently. Mm. <laughs> um, apparently, the secret to business, business success is turning your staff into vampires. Um, they don't sleep, they don't get tired, they don't eat much, aside from the same thing. <laughs> yeah, but... That's got to be hard to sustain. Yeah, but sustain and immortality, like, gauge those two together. No, no, no. I mean, consider what their munchies are. They, they, you know, like, kill people. And that, that's got to, someone's going to start noticing. I mean, aggressive expansion of the business at that point. What can we say? Now hiring. <laughs> now hiring, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> New jobs opening every day. That's kind of like running um, applications at the same time as getting a new kind of like candy machine in the you know cafeteria when you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, next we had Dead Snow 2. It, it does not quite recapture the original. They went way more slapstick with it. But you know what? Yeah. I didn't hate it. It was you know, entertaining I, enough. I, I was glad that we watched it, but it just it wasn't the same. I it still found it fun. It's fun. I still found it fun. I still got several good laughs out of it. It's just nowhere near as good as the original. I, I didn't laugh at any of this. The highs of this movie were nowhere near the highs of the original. And like the highs of the original was mostly just like the one fucking scene with the Molotov. Oh, there were other highs. When that, there were others, but that was peak. The the, the, the one. Yeah. I, I, we were all just fucking crying at that goddamn scene when that happened. Like, Even just conscious. thinking about it now, it just it kind of helped but laugh at. The one guy having a blowjob while he's having a crap at the same time was also really good in the original. Hmm. I would have thought that would have been really uncomfortable, but okay. The more you learn. The, I, I had, I found it somewhat amusing, just nowhere near as good as the first. And the problem with it being a sequel is that you're going to constantly compare it with the first, and the first one was so much funnier. Uh, there is an I mean, elephant. Oh, okay. go on, buddy. I mean... This movie is not concerned with what we thought was good about the first one. This one's only concerned of continuation. Like it, it just wants to tell its own story, and it just wants to continue with a story that was set up before and just keep going. There 
there's an elephant in the room, I think, with this one. And it, it, this is a direct sequel. Like, it, it literally takes place yes. like, right yeah. after the events of the original. Like, moments after the original concluded. But, but it, quite a lot of time passed between the first movie and the second one. And the, the, our main protagonist visually looks older. Yeah, we, we looked this up, like, wasn't it 2009 when the original uh, Dead Snow was created? And this one was 2014. So it was like a good uh, six years. Like a good uh, five or six five. years. Right? Yeah. So I didn't think he looked that much different. And it's mm. that wasn't even really an issue for me. It, it's I gotta be honest with you. I, I didn't even think he was like the main character of the original movie. I just thought he was the guy that survived to the end. Oh, yeah, Cause, that's what he was. Because like, like we go through a lot of cast members in that first movie and it's like who is the lead character of this? I thought it was an ensemble piece, but No You say survives at the end, but I mean it was the end being Vaguely, kind of a cliffhanger. It was kind of implied that it wasn't over, and he was basically going to be dead. Yeah, they kind of read. I the don't end. think yeah. they really wanted. They they did. They obviously didn't originally have a sequel in mind. But yeah, no. They, it seems like they threw a script together. It was like, yeah, this is funny. We'll kind of work this into this somehow. Like, and c- then went confirm for me something. Hey, confirm for me something. In the original movie, the first uh, Dead Snow, was our lead character in the second one? Did he have glasses before he cu- uh, cut off his arm? Like, wasn't he the nerdy guy that cut off his arm that had glasses at one point? Or is he a completely different remember, character? Man, I spent a year. Okay. Okay. Here's another thing that I found rather interesting. Right, where does this movie take place? Uh, no Norway. Way. Uh, Norway. Okay, the original one's in uh, Norwegian. Yes. Why is this one in English? Oh, because uh, the first one was so popular in foreign shows, they were just like, let's sell this to Americans, as they could do. Mm Because it was apparently very popular in America. Yeah, apparently it did a lot better here than it did over there. So, like, obviously the first thing they do is just stick to awkward American characters. Oh, three, buddy, and they're annoying as hell. Well, four. Oh, yeah, four. Yeah, the kid. They are annoying as hell, though. They just stand out. They, they, They're supposed to be horrible stereotypes. Yeah, which which is obviously like plays to their advantage, I guess, as characters. But like, they, they just they stand out like crazy in this like place that's clearly just an all way in the you know. <laughs> I mean, there was pretty much a line in that movie which was from them, which was basically just, "Ugh, why can't we just get guns here?" Or something is like they, if that didn't make it clear that there was a fucking stereotype, what does? But the thing is, it's not said for you or me. It's said for the average American. Mm. So it's like tongue in cheek of really, this is like what a different country is really like. Yeah, if you go to a different country, you have to play by the rules of that country. Yeah, Joe. It- even when dealing with Nazis, Nazi zombies. Who, are, who, who are also zombies, and have a tank, and oddly intelligent, a a, a tank that's yeah, from World that that is something to be said. That is one of the rare movies of an intelligent zombie, or zombies even, but only a few. Hmm. The others seem to just be your regular shambling yeah. idiots. I mean, like the original, in the original movie, I mean, some of the zombies are obviously, you know, smarter than, you know, the typical kind of shambler. But yeah. there, there was, a, you know, there's a certain intelligence to some of them and it's very uncommon for zombie movies. It's kind of interesting to see that. That's right. That is kind of different. They were driving a tank. They weren't dummies. Hmm. Yeah, driving a tank does require a lot of fucking work. And lastly, of Karen's picks, we have Freaky. Vince Vaughn and whoever played the girl. Uh, whoever, oh God, it, was, it was the uh, woman who played um, Jimmy's daughter on Supernatural. 
I, yeah, I don't know her. But... Wow, that's a, that's a callback there right there. Oh, 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 oh you, you want to know something else? They're bringing her into the MCU. She's going to be an Ant-Man 3. All right. Okay. Back to the movie. Vince Vaughn and her switch bodies. Yeah. Oh, and Vince Vaughn's a serial killer. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought it was all right. I've already seen it because I believe it was made by the same person who made uh, Happy Death Happy Day. Happy Death Day, yeah. Which is mm-hmm. one of my favorite yes. movies. And it is a Blumhouse movie. Catherine Newton. That's the girl's name. Actress's name. Mm -hmm. Entertaining enough. Not. Nothing overly special, but. It's one of those. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't terrible. Not really too much more to say. I really liked it. Which one is this? Freaky? Yeah. Mm. Uh, I suppose, like, the main draw of it really is seeing Freaky Friday from a horror perspective. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was looking at the trivia or something on the night, and and, uh, the original title was Freaky Friday the 13th. (laughs) Bit much. Mm. Uh... Yeah, well, originally it, that was the working title. It just got shortened to Freaky. It, I mean, which, it is, which is a, it's absolutely just a combination of the two things, Freaky Friday and Friday the 13th. It, it, that's entirely what the movie is, and it works. So. Ah, not, not the Friday the 13th part. The Freaky Friday thing does work really well. Friday um, the 13th being the... Uh, Kind of the baseline sort of horror movie, essentially. Like, what makes this movie work really well and what the, really the story is that we got from it is when you think about it, it's just mainly the body swap. And the body swap is, instead of originally with Freaky Friday, it's like the mother and daughter, isn't it? Yeah, there was also a version that's father and son. And there's actually one with George Burns and Robbie Benson that's grandfather, grandson. Uh- but the intent of this is like the dynamic is our serial killer and serial killer's victim. So therefore the tables turn for ownership of the body, which is the real you know goal of the whole thing, right? The enmity between the two is so natural, but how do you convince everybody else like, no, he's the guy, not me. <laughs> and you're inhabiting his body. I feel like we're missing the elephant in the room in this movie. Okay. Uh, Vince Vaughn's serial killer character um, kills quite a few, quite a large, well, I don't want to say a large, but several people in Catherine Catherine Newton's body. To establish, though. And then they switch back. Shouldn't Catherine Newton's character be wanted for murder now? No witnesses. No witnesses. So they assumed it was attributed to the butcher. I mean, uh, I, I work in a school, and we have a lot of cameras. And if dead bodies started showing up in my school, they'd probably start checking those cameras. It wasn't me. It was the one I man. I didn't kill it. The serial killer hijacked my body. <laughs> I, I feel like that gets ignored. <laughs> it does. They never deal with the aftermath, which we've discussed. I didn't kill my family. The ghost did. Seems legit. No, no, we watched the movie that dealt with that. We watched uh, Friday the 13th. Uh, wait, no, wait, not Friday the 13th. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Remember um, the boyfriend at the beginning? Oh, yeah, yeah. He- Was assumed to have, but they dropped that pretty well. He dies. Yeah, he dies before that can it. continue, really. But it, I mean, like at the very end of the movie, your final girl, which it's almost always a final girl, never has to deal with the consequences of, oh, yeah, it really looks like you killed all these people. Well, if, if, there's, a, if there's a human 
killer, it's, you know, understandable. Like, you How know, Michael Myers. Wanted. Yeah, okay, there we go. But if it's a ghost or, or a demon, then yeah, it doesn't make yeah. sense. Or how about when the demon possesses the person and through that person's body kills people, it gets exercised, they walk away, no charges, nothing. I'm sorry, in reality, people do get charged even if they say they were possessed by the demon. So it's, it's just, um, thing is, it's fiction, it's entertainment, it's fun. You, you don't. Yeah, this came out when we watched uh, Slither the other year, and we were like, man, it must suck to be the survivor of a horror movie. You know, to be the one that says, like, well, that was rough. It's a shame you missed it. Uh, Why are you putting me in cuffs? (laughs) I didn't kill my family. It was the pumpkin demon. I mean, it's a really good point to be made, though, where it's like you're surrounded by 500 bodies. Are they really going to believe, like, you did it, you alone? Come on. (laughs) Like the entire town at Slither gets it by the end, and we except expect for to three believe, people, except for Nathan Fillion and like a young girl, and a no, no, one other ones. person. <laughs> I don't remember who the other one was, because I know Michael Rucker gets it. He's the villain. Rucker. Yeah, he's basically Patient Zero in that mm-hmm. movie, if I remember. <laughs> Poor guy. But Freak entertained me quite a lot, actually. I don't think Jack Black was quite... You mean Vince Vaughn? Uh, Yeah, Vince Vaughn was quite as good as Jack Black in Jumanji, pretending to be a teenage girl. But I think he did pretty well. I mean, he, he embarrassed himself as the role. That's what you want. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not exactly the true detective season two cheesy events fun that we all, you know, kind of <laughs> love it, both love and hate. Yeah. Simultaneous. I, I could love and not hate. watch that. I tried. I, I got, I think two episodes and I was like, nope, can't do this. The original season of true detective is like a masterpiece. Those it's flawless. Episodes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incredible. Perfect. So good, but like season two, uh, <gasps> yeah. I've never seen Woody Harrelson better than in True Detective. I think that is his best ever. Anyway, what was your favorite blood sucking bastards by far and away? <laughs> it was easy, easy as pick for me in this. Uh... I'm having a hard time picking, honestly. Blood sucking bastards for me as well. Honorable and mention to honorable mention to eat locals. Yeah. <laughs> Karen. Mm. Of your movies, what was your favorite? Uh, Day shift, probably uh, you, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, they were all pretty, in- a lot of them pretty entertaining for their own reasons. I mean, yeah, like I said, if only for the hope of a possible Snoop Dogg Vampire Hunter TV show. Day shift. Go on. Nobody I'm, I'm really honestly having a hard time with this one. Say what you feel. Like I this. actually really liked Freaky. Okay. I really did. Um, the teenagers somehow did not get on my last nerve, which is a fucking miracle. And it's, it's I, a, I found Vince Vaughn really amusing. Like, I feel like it's appealing, it's charming, but it benefited more for me being not surprised by what was happening. You know, if it was called Free, uh, Freaky Friday the 13th, it would have been terrible. You would have known full well like yeah. what was going to happen. It benefited me not knowing, like with its title being vague and ambiguous. I had heard of it before. I just had never seen it. I have, but you know. Uh, so with two votes on blood sucking bastards, that wins of uh, Kieran's picks. Pedro Pascal wins. Yes. <laughs> 